Welcome back everyone. You're watching Centerline Designs. My name's Cole if you're new to the channel and this is the Centerline Design Snowcat build. Um, it's coming on really nicely. If you watched last, week, last week's episode, I uh, did a quick review of the machine, my thought process and what I'm trying to create here. And uh, yeah, I went through a quick overview. I really suggest you go watch that. I think people kind of enjoyed that at the beginning of the video. It's been a long time since I've really laid out my overall vision for this build. Um, and last week he separated the cab from the hull because this is going to be an amphibious vehicle so you know the bottom half i'm really referring to as a hull because it's going to be watertight and we got the 3 16 belly pan on a little bit of welding left to do in some of these off angle areas i'm just going to wait till we have it on the side get in there on a better uh better angle when you're spool gunning aluminum although i can do overhead and vertical with it um, it tends to go through a lot more tips um, that spray uh, spray transfer welding that you're doing with the spool gun um, tends to fall back onto the tip itself and mess it up. But anyways, flat horizontal is just going to give me a better quality weld. Um, today, what I want to do is come in and we're going to flip this on the either side. We'll get the side hulls scribed to notch around all of these axles, and then we'll start seam welding that in. All right, so a little bit of a hot topic I see in the comments is the fact that I don't have enough bracing on all these axles. And um, if you've watched all the videos, you'll understand I've addressed that. There, there is bracing plan in the future for all these. Uh, the reason it's not in there now is because I want to get the hull done first and then the bracing will go on after. Um, so it does look a little weak at the moment and I totally agree but uh, that will be resolved. And that's one of those things. I just, I just really can't spend the time to explain it. You're just gonna have to watch the video. So the bottom of this machine is pretty much fully welded in at this point. So I guess I should stop talking and let's get to work, uh, rig this up, get it on its side. And uh, I'll grab the 1 8 50 52 sheet that's gonna go on the sides. And uh, let's start marking, cutting and welding. All right, let's get to it. Sometimes I gotta get a little creative with my rigging here. I only have so many slings and a variety of lengths, but I guess it's time to finally buy some more. All right, well, I guess uh, first things first, just like we did with the belly pan, let's get in here. I gotta smooth out a lot of these welds that uh, you know were a part of building the chassis, get those flushed up, get the plate on here, start marking around every axle, and then it'll notch in around them and we'll get to some welding. Let's do some measuring and marking. One and seven eighths. One and seven eighths. So mark that one seven eighths. And we want that to go down basically flush. Okay, it's mark and cut. Okay. 
Okay, there has been something I've been dying to try. I keep seeing it on all these uh, YouTube videos. Um, I really haven't figured out how it works, but uh, I think I have an idea. So, <clears throat> pretty sure the way it works is you imagine what you want to get done, and then you position yourself. I don't know, I'll close my eyes just in case that has something to do with it, and you go, no, it's not done. I don't know, how, anyone know how they do that? They close your eyes, snap your fingers, and then, you know, it automatically cuts over and it's done. Let's try one more time. No. Okay, I'll start working on that. Ooh, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Not liking that. Okay, I'll give you a little bit closer look here. We got that front end done. I have it notched out for all the axle holes. Oops. And uh, yeah, as I work my way down tacking everything, I'm just gonna put some weight on here or go get some of my uh, pipe clamps. Actually, I'll probably do that. Get some pipe clamps on there. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I just need to make sure it doesn't stick up past here because the cab comes and sits on here. And then there's gonna be another piece that comes off here um, I just haven't decided if it's going to get welded to this or fastened to this so that it can split apart. Well, I think we're fit up pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. It's not perfect but pretty much going the way I want here so uh, I guess next step is uh, we'll start tacking and, and welding uh, it's gonna be a lot of welding probably wind up doing another montage on this but uh, this top side this top side still has me thinking uh, as I may have mentioned there earlier there's gonna be another piece that comes out that goes under the cab because it needs to widen out for the cab to come sit up here as part of the hull. And I haven't determined if I want to lay that piece of one eighth flat on here and seam weld that, that corner joint, or if I want to weld a piece of angle to the, the section that'll be here and then fasten it. I like the idea of fastening it with a little bit of sealant in there because that will uh, continue to allow me to split the cab although I'm not sure I ever need to again. Okay, I've had a little bit of a change of heart. As much as I wanna just get going and get welding, I think I said this before, I wanna do it right. So unfortunately, I'm gonna unclamp this. What I wanna do is I'm gonna mark where my gussets are gonna be, and then I'm gonna knock out a little hole, plug weld that, so that when we weld the gusset in, um, this one eight you know, hull material, this cladding, will be affixed under that, and then we'll weld in the support, weld in the support. And that support is mainly going to only be under uh, compression. So I'm not too worried about it pulling away and ripping the hull apart. But I do want the hull material to be secured to the chassis here. And then I'm going to do the same, just knock some holes down this edge. Don't really want to put any weld here where the chassis or the, the cab, sorry, is going to be mating up. So we'll just do some plug welding. So unfortunately, that means I need to mark this out, unclamp it all, drill a bunch of holes, but I've convinced myself that's the right way to do it. Let's get to it.
Okay, that felt very painful. Drill holes in it, but we'll weld it up. Okay, well, I had to just get the camera down there and uh, get to work because things were starting to take longer than I wanted. And if I feel like showing any progress in this week's uh, video, uh, I needed to get something done. So this hull side is completely welded in. I flushed down all of these uh, plug welds and the bottom and around the axles is all seam welded in. Not the prettiest in the world. It's not bad, but you know, spool gunning, it just is what it is. It, it's functional. It's not going to win any awards for uh, beauty contests, but I went ahead off camera, um, cut some of my gusseting material. It is three eighths by three inch flat bar, 6061. And uh, my idea was always come in and every axle, well, other than the front and rear, um, get three plates, brace it in all directions. The front will just have two. I don't need one braced forwards. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's gonna work out really well here. We'll get some prep done and uh, let's get these buzzed on. Cause that just, we're that much closer. And then I think the only thing left is the back end of the machine. There's one more piece that needs to go in and then a little uh, angle plate that allows some spacing for the wheel motors. And then that's also where I'm gonna put some threaded uh, sleeves through the hull. So I'll have like a short one foot hydraulic hose on the exterior of the machine. And then inside, it will thread in a new hose that goes to the pumps. So there'll be very, very little hydraulic hose exposed outside to get caught on anything or rupture. And uh, I think it'll work out quite well. And that's just a nice method of getting those hoses through the hull without, you know, any leaks or chafing. So anyways, let's get going. when the spool gun's working it's working nice you know i'm that is really nice i'm i mean 
How can you not like that? Well, new day for me. Two seconds for you. But uh, let's work on rolling this around. I'm going to get uh, these axles finished welding in. And then I think I'm going to call that it for this video. And I'm going to go ahead and complete the other side off camera just to help speed things up. So we can show some more progress in the next videos. Let's get this hoisted up. <clears throat> All right, we just got the bottom sides of all these gussets welded, but I guess before I call it, you know, complete one side, let's uh, finish closing in this back here. We need to notch it down, seam weld it all in. So let's make up this part, weld that in, and then I think I'm gonna call that quits for this video. I'll go ahead and repeat the other side, which is cookie cutter. So uh, let's get some measurements, cut up some material, and do a little bending and digging. Okay. You know what, I thought about it overnight, I slept on it, and I'm pretty sure I know how this happens. So I'm gonna imagine this being done, and ready? Wow, it worked! <laughs> okay, let's uh, weld it in. Okay, well, I've gone about as far as I can go with that spool gun here. Um, I closed in the rest of the seams. Um, I do have this butt joint here to take care of between the two pieces. Um, and it being an unsupported joint, no backing in it, I'm going to TIG that in. So I changed the machine over to a TIG setup. We're going to TIG weld that in. And then, oopsie, um, I'm also going to TIG weld this outside corner. And since I have it, I'll probably just TIG this whole corner piece in. So once I get this done, let everything cool down a little bit, and then we'll go make this bend and close it off and weld it in, and then I can officially say one side done.
Okay, I ripped that off. I got my bend line in there. We'll bend it up, we'll fit it. We'll have to cut the chamfer on this and we'll get it in place. I have my extra large die in here and my springs don't uh, take the weight of this punch very well. But sometimes you got to use what you got. Now I erred on a little bit of long on the height. Looks like I overbent it, but I actually hit the height pretty good. Perfect. I like that. I'm gonna have to finish just kind of grinding out a little bit of these welds and uh, make it fit a little bit better and mark it up. Boom, there we go. I just went ahead and taped that all into place. That is fully seam welded. There you have it. One side is officially done. Went ahead, tigged all that in. As I mentioned, wheel motor is gonna sit in here that'll drive the drive tire or the sprocket. Haven't yet determined, but uh, it's really starting to look like something now. And if you've made it this far through the video all the way to the end, I really appreciate you watching. Um, thanks for all the support, everyone. Again, if you're liking this build, share it around. I think this is going to be a pretty interesting vehicle when it's all said and done. So thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.